Hello and welcome to the season finale of EVTV. I'm your anchor, Rogelio Gallardo. And I'm your co-anchor, Nate Malloy. Rogelio, have you ever wondered where our school funding goes? No, I really have no clue, Nate. Well, Bernie and Carter went out to get the insight. Carter and I were curious about the budget, so we talked to Don to see how it was decided. They uh, create formulas, essentially, that uh, calculate how much of a total budget you can get to do all the things that you need in your building to cover students, staff, and whatever it is that you're, you're running. So it starts at a very, very big level like that. And then yes, I get a, or we get a pot of money, and then that becomes our instructional budget, our athletic budget, our transportation budget, um, and then it gets further divided out by departments, programs, all that sort of stuff. Once Stone divides the money, it goes to the head of each department. Mr. Dupree for science and Mr. Zaring for math. I always tell them how much money we have and I ask them whatever they need to um, buy for supplies or um, software or something for the classroom. Um, bring it to me and then we'll uh, look at the amount and determine um, if, that is, is, if it's feasible to buy it for our department. A lot of expenditures are consistent year-to-year -year things. Uh, you know, there's certain labs that we do that we did last year and we did the year before that and the year before that. And so we have a general idea of, okay, we know we have, I know as a biology teacher, I know that I'm going to need to purchase things like dialysis tubing for osmosis labs, you know, or certain things like that. And so there's a knowledge that each of us come to the table with as teachers. Chemistry teachers will come to me and say, hey, we need to make a purchase because we have to, um, we have to reload all the chemicals that we used last year, things like iodine or you know sodium chloride or whatever. Uh, we need to make a purchase for chemistry. And so we'll put together a big purchase through a scientific supply company like Flynn. Uh, it depends on um, what they need for the classroom. One year that uh, we, uh, we bought a whole bunch of just regular calculators and uh, um, Mr. Uh, Unavian, Mr. Hagelin, um, uh, they went in the, those classrooms and one year we bought a bunch of graphing calculators and those go into the higher level classrooms because that's where they, they use them. All the department chairs try to spend all of their money before the year is over. So you want to avoid wasteful spending just because the money's there. Um, but yeah, I want, I want people to spend it down because it's intended to be used on those kids that year. That's really how a budgeting cycle works is you paid your student fees Taxes were collected in that year by your parents, and in that year we should spend as much of that money as we can on the kids and on the program. This has been Bernie McManus. Here in Eagle Valley, we have a lot of interesting substitute teachers that we don't know much about. Thanks to Alondra and Hannah, we have the opportunity to learn more about who they are. We all enjoy and appreciate the time and effort teachers dedicate to us as students, but everyone needs a break. Whether it's due to sickness or vacation, even teachers miss school sometimes. We all have had a sub or two thus far in, in our high school career, but who are these substitutes? My name is Bill, that's B-I-L-L, -L, and I've been here five years off and on. My name is Yvonne Hughes. Rewarding job, I enjoy watching people flower and bloom in the environment of modern education. On the whole, it's been a wonderful experience. They may have an impact on you personally, but what impact do we have upon them? Uh, favorite moments of subbing. Um, I don't know, I, I enjoy pretty much, you know, every day. It's, it's a fabulous thing to, to be a, a one-named, a temporary person with no benefits. Okay, about six years ago, there was a little person, and his name's Trevor. Okay, Trevor said, Miss Hughes, can I please kick the soccer ball in class? No, you can't kick it in class. Well, the next thing I know, he had kicked it out the window. This is upstairs in Mr. Tibble's class. But he kicked the soccer ball out of the window, and it got onto the roof. I don't know how. It hit the double bank. The next thing I know, little Trevor is on the roof. He had climbed out of the window and got on the roof and was walking around on the roof and and the next thing I know, he was riding around to school on his little moped. And then I helped him get his college essay done, and he got into a really good college. And he said, thank you, Ms. Hughes, it was all you. So yeah, it was me, thank you. 
Not only do we have substitutes that are occasionally here, but we also have permanent subs who are in the building all the time, just like a teacher. Um, I was really looking to get into the school, um, mostly because of soccer, because I knew I was going to be the boys and girls coach, and I wanted to just be more connected with the teams and trying to get to know more of the kids outside of soccer. Um, and so I was talking to Mr. Doan and asking him if there was any way I could get in, and this was the, kind of the perfect, perfect opportunity. So. Believe it or not, I was really close friends with Eric Mandeville, and I used to come in and teach his history, medieval history classes, and bring in my armor and swords and dress students up and let them see what it felt like. And they had an opening for a substitute. He knew I had retired, and he said, well, why don't you come be a substitute? And then the opportunity presented itself to become a permanent substitute, and so I just stayed here. Um, I think getting to know not only my soccer kids more, but the whole student body, um, that's been really exciting and really fun because, you know, being a part of the school on the soccer field is really fun, but then to be a part of the school more kind of in the everyday aspect has been really fun and exciting. I like being here. I like one of the hard things when you retire is having a sense of value. And after 36 years in the fire service, I needed a sense of value and I feel valuable being here every day. That's why I dress in a tie and look nice for the kids. I, re I want them to know I respect them for being here. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. Know that every teacher in this school, if you want to be successful, is willing to bend over backwards to make you successful. This has been Hannah Medina. If you're interested in participating in a club here at Eagle Valley, luckily for you, sign language is now being offered. All right. Hi, my name is Katie Rivera, and I have started a new club at Eagle Valley High School called Sign Language Club. It's every Tuesday from 3.30 to 4 in the Counseling Center. Learning sign language has so many benefits, some of which are learning another language, communicating with people who are deaf, or nonverbal, and it's just so much fun. Also, belonging to a club is great for your resume and your general skill set. Come check us out, 3.30 on Tuesdays in the Counseling Center. Thanks for joining us on this episode of EVTV. Good luck on your finals. And see you next time.